We want to take you back in time, to a time where people lived off the land, foraging berries from the mountain, picking fruit from trees and catching fish from the sea. Today, we will hear stories of what life was like in the naval port of Simonstown in the 1950s. Walking down the main road today, we see countless small cafes and artisanal stores. But in the 1950s, this very same street looked a whole lot different, with children running up and down from the mountain to the beach and back, filling their bellies along the way. A child looking for a snack always knew where to go, the Admiral's house. For the Admiral's house had all kinds of fruit trees. Let's hear from Auntie Zakina Peterson as she tells us how she managed to get her hands on the Admiral's fruit. Well, we never live out of the shops. We live out of the fruit growing in the people's garden. You know, so we never bought fruit because yeah. we went to go pick. Then enough. the boys stand outside, keep watch when we're the girls in the tree first. When we come out and they go in and they really scared. Then we shout, Madam, Madam, there's people in your tree. And then we run and they still the thing in the tree. He did the day of ten and they come out and they think it's about booms and it's not booms, and it's, then it's the boyfriends yeah. in the tree. But anyway, we live out of the trees freshly. Sea runks, worrels we ate, you know, anything out of the mountain. Auntie Zakina and her friends had a very particular strategy to get the fruit from the Admiral's trees without getting caught. But this was not the only strategy they employed. Auntie Zakina Mayer talks about how she and her group of friends used a plank to get to the Admiral's fruit. Auntie Zakina and her friends went to great lengths to get the Admiral's fruit, but sometimes it was as simple as being the lookout. Auntie Patricia Langford remembers that she was always the lookout, a very important job that required her constant attention. We run up to Paradise Road. We go see them. After that, I said, hey, come on. I'm there, the one tells them, can we go here? Then we go up now to, to um, where Calvin used to stay, up that road, up that road. There was a lot of fruit, and I must stand and watch out. I say, Vivi, Vivi, da, 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 da. Mr. Thomas, that's his man's name. Come on. I said, no, 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 no. Now, I'm the outlooker. I'm the one who must look out, because that man will come and will eat us with a stick. <laughs> the quinces, oh, the grapes. Everything. I said, come. Salt. Salt. Now, salt means there's somebody that's, that's coming. Mm. Now, I'm the first one to run. I leave them behind. <laughs> I leave them behind. But afterwards, we made friends. If getting to the Admiral's fruit was impossible, they knew down at the beach they could also find something to eat either from the fishermen pulling in their nets or simply by scourging for limpets on the rocks. Auntie Nancy Bull tells us about how they ate from the sea. My brother, my uncles and dad used to tie perlamoon, you know how they call it? I don't know how they call it in English. Yeah, it's perlamoon. Yeah, yeah, that. Yes, uh, now also in the scallops, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see. But now they got the helicopters. Yeah. You see how they ride around? 
Catch people. Yeah, they used to protect dive them. that. Yeah, yeah. We used to take that. Uh, we call it lentils. Eh? We used to take it over the rocks. Yeah. You know. And if you got the machine where you where you mix it, and if you put mince and we put all that in an onion and egg and all that, then we make we call it frikadels. You know. Yeah, we make it. Now you can't do that. <laughs> No. You can only take five. Yeah. We used to take a bag full. So, yeah. Now they protect that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Even I'm We catch a lot of uh, crayfish, eh? Crayfish, mm. fish. Now yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, now you. Now we, oh, we miss all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah miss. We used to go in the mountain, we, we pick uh, the flowers. You can't pick the flowers too. <laughs> Remember the proteas and the yeah. heats, we call it. Yeah, we used to go in the mountain, pick up that. Look for, we call it, you know, besties, berries, you know. Mm. We go around and we do that. But I said, children don't do that anymore. Today, no. children, I, no, they don't know about that. We knew, you know, go pick besties. Auntie Nancy speaks to the deep connection they have, not only with the sea, but also with the mountain, as she talks about foraging for limpids on the rocks and collecting berries from the mountain. But Auntie Vivian remembers going down to the beach and waiting for the fishermen to come in. Uh, going to the beach was lovely. We were just saying, you, you heard us saying about the beach now, that that's our beach yeah. there next to the station. And uh, uh, um, that was very nice. We used to, uh, uh, um, when they used to uh, trek fish, the cottons, mm. they used to trek fish. And uh, uh, we also used to have our fish also. Yeah, it was all free for, 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 for the free and they used to dish out for, for we as people also. And uh, um, I won't say that we ever that time got, we were hungry people, starving people, because there was always something for us to eat. And uh, um, the beach was nice. The beach belonged to us in Simon's Town. As Auntie Vivian said, the beach belonged to them to the children of Simonstown. But this would all come to an end on the 1st of September, 1967, the day Simonstown was declared a white group area by the apartheid government, and families like Auntie Vivian's, Auntie Zakina's, and Auntie Nancy's would all during the 1970s have to move to Slankop, a newly created township on the top of the mountain. We will hear Auntie Elizabeth Peterson as she looks back on those dreadful moments. I used to go to the beach and one thing from the view of Smith's Lane, I look on the harbour and I can see the trains coming in, I can uh, I look to the station. Yo. Can you see the beautiful view that Yo. I Yo. Yes, so I was very upset when we were forcibly removed from science. Mm, did they give any reason as to why they were moving you? The part that was, you must know, it was the part that era, and I mean, they didn't give us reasons or what, they just forcibly removed No us. letter of notice to say, no, not later, within four no, days nothing, we'll move yeah, you. And nothing. We were also shocked. It was, I mean, you know, it was shock, um, really a shock for us. Forcibly, and you must do it quick. Mm. You mustn't. We couldn't still ask them or whatever, mm. because then the police will remove us. And the trucks were there just to... Uh, yeah, everything. the trucks were there, you must just put, um, they put your furniture in and you must go, you must leave. When they left Simonstown, life would never be the same. They could no longer eat the fruit that grew in abundance in the yards of their neighbours. They could no longer forage for herbs in the mountains or scavenge for limpids on the beach they called their own. Life as they knew it had changed. They could no longer sustain themselves from what nature provided for them. They had to adjust to a new reality in this new place, this place called Slankop, which today is known as Ocean View. I'm Lisa Hendricks, and you're listening to another episode in the District 6 Museum Vusalela Onslaiser podcast series. No matter where we are, we are here. The audio snippets used in this podcast are taken from the District 6 Museum archive. The stories produced through this podcast series and the opinions and statements that may be contained herein do not reflect those of the District 6 Museum, but rather the individuals hosted within this series. This program is funded by the Mellon Foundation.